Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India students you are welcome in this class the topic of this lecture is protection of natural resources by resource conservation technologies for sustainable crop production so learning objectives are to understand the need for conservation agriculture and resource conservation technologies learn the role of conservation agriculture and resource conservation technologies in restoring the natural resources and sustainable crop production so some terminology uh, climate smart agriculture these days this word is quite common so a farming that responds to climate change by adapting and building resilience in farming practices reducing greenhouse gases from the atmosphere while providing the farmer income so uh, your conservation agriculture is also considered as climate smart agriculture conservation of natural resources the protection improvement and use of natural resources according to principles that will assure their highest economic or social benefits for humans and environment now and in future conservation agriculture a, an agriculture practice that aims to achieve sustainable and profitable agriculture through the minimal mechanical soil disturbance permanent soil cover and following crop rotations conservation tillage method for growing annual crops in the previous year's crop residue which reduce soil erosion and retain water and nutrients on the land retaining 30% of the crop residue on the field this conservation tillage is in fact part of the or major part of the conservation agriculture land in economics it includes all that which is available free of cost from the nature as a gift to human beings examples are land water air light heat or even biodiversity land use land use is characterized by arrangements activities and inputs people undertake in a certain land cover type to produce change or maintain it minimum tillage minimal soil manipulation or disturbance in combination with chemicals for adequate seed bed preparation and vegetative vegetation control mulch a layer of material particularly biological material applied on the surface of soil to conserve soil moisture improve fertility and health of the soil and reduce weed growth and enhance the visual appeal of the area so there could be many purposes of mulching to control the weed to conserve the moisture to improve the fertility and so on resilience the capacity of a system to absorb disturbance and retain its structure and function means if there is any disturbance in the in the system then it can tolerate it can bear that res, uh, that disturbance and remain unaffected or less affected soil conservation measures comprises any set of measures intended to control or prevent soil erosion or to maintain fertility soil conservation practices practices of land management cultivation systems land management and small construction works for correcting preventing or reducing soil degradation soil degradation can happen by many means sometimes by soil erosion sometimes chemical degradation of fertility or of soil zero tillage is the process where the crop seed will be sown through dealers drillers without prior land preparation and disturbing the soil where previous crop stubbles are present so zero tillage means no tillage you can say now what is conventional agriculture and what are conventional system so conventional systems are the traditional system which are prevalent these days under most of the indian conditions so in those systems what farmers do they do lot of tillage lot of manipulation of the soil then then put the seed into it and use use fertilizers 
and mostly imbalanced use of fertilizer and which is causing pollution. So, the conventional system of agriculture you can see here they do tillage physical manipulation of soil to provide favorable condition of plant growth. Purpose is to prepare the fine seed and root bed for sowing to ensure proper germination and initial vigor, improve soil structure, moisture conservation, control weeds and other pests, mixing of fertilizer and residues. So definitely in the conservation in the conventional agriculture, there are many, many purposes of tillage, but the main thing is that tillage is too much and it results in costly energy intensive process and requiring energy, fossil fuel and hard work. And it has many adverse effects, the conventional tillage in conventional agricultural system. For example, too much of plowing may lead to accelerated soil erosion, loss of soil structure. If you repeatedly plow it, plow it, then aggregation is, aggregates are broken down and it results in poor soil structure or sometimes too much plowing can result in single grain structure. Soil uh, compaction, oxidation of soil organic matter because repeatedly you are adding oxygen or air into the, into the soil which accelerate the decomposition of organic matter. And deterioration of soil biological health particularly when you use too much of uh, pesticides under these systems. Energy crisis if you are doing 4 or 5 plowing by tractor, by animal power, so definitely too much of energy is wasted or used, increasing cost and labor shortages. So there are many issues concerned with the conventional agricultural system and we need to change this kind of system. And also uh, there are certain uh, things happening in the country in favor of changing this system and there are some current issues also related to with the system like declining factor productivity. Factor means land, labor, capital, management, these are the factors and through capital mostly farmers buy inputs like machinery or seed or fertilizer. So for example fertilizer, the productivity of fertilizer is declining, means say 20 years before you were getting about 30 kilograms of rice grain by using 1 kg nitrogen, now you are getting 15 to 20 kg grain, means the efficiency or productivity of fertilizer has decline. So similarly there are many other inputs where the factor productivity is declining. Declining groundwater table, this conventional farming in the country is resulting in declining soil water, the declining groundwater levels or tab table. See the case of national average around 33 centimeter per year. We are losing the water table means it is going down. Similarly in Punjab situation is more alarming where about 53 centimeter per year water table is going down. So groundwater table going down means if you want to pump out water, you need to take it or draw it from deeper layer and energy cost is increased. So therefore declining groundwater table is serious concern and deterioration in soil fertility, deterioration of soil physical environment, particularly by over plowing of the land. Biotic in, in, uh, interferences, declining biodiversity. Now farmers have abandoned many crops they were growing. Say in Punjab, say about uh, uh, 30, 40 years back, farmers were growing about 15 to 16 different crops, but now hardly they are growing, growing four to five crops. That means diversity of the crops has declined. And high energy requirements because you use few fossil fuel in plowing, so a lot of energy is required and which result in air pollution and also groundwater pollution and stagnating farm incomes. Farmers are not getting any increase in their income. And definitely there is need for change in conventional system and also system, the other systems are assisting. Some new things have come up, some new facilities or new inputs have come up and farmers can think to convert from conventional system to another systems like availability of new machinery. New kind of machineries are available. We will discuss subsequently what kind of machineries are available. Herbicides are available for weed control. And non availability of labor, this is serious issue. Farmers are not getting labors, too much labors. So we need to really mechanize this system. Increasing cost, energy crisis, erosion losses, pollution hazard, 
decreasing decreasing soil fertility disturbs soil structure and our organic matter content of the soil is continuously declining under field conditions of course there are many reasons for decline of organic matter that must be increased if we want to restore the soil fertility and sustain the crop production residue burning is serious issue in punjab haryana western up and some other part of the country where rice residues are burnt it is it has become very national and international issue so we need we need not to burn those resi residues we want to use them back into the soil low water and nutrient use efficiency the water nutrient use efficiency are declining and increase in cropping intensity we are getting more and more crops multiple cropping system each year from the soil but we are not adding the whatever we remove from the soil we do not add the same quantity of nutrients back to the soil means kind of depletion of soil fertility or nutrient mining is happening now what can be done under these circumstances if the income is reducing environment is polluting and we are not getting good productivity from the plants so there are number of options one option could be diversification of the crops and cropping systems and then integrated farming system could be an option where you combine different enterprises along with crop crop production so enterprises could be your uh, poultry could be your duckery piggery livestock biogas plant and your beekeeping and several enterprises can be combined and make the system sustainable other system could could be to in, to increase the efficiency of our inputs like water herbicides or fertilizers and definitely we need to increase the input of organic uh, manures into the soil and we need to apply bio fertilizers which are environment friendly and almost the, they are free of cost means low cost inputs and some bio agents can be used one option could be organic farming as well and area under organic farming is also increasing in the country and uh, the other uh, choice can be conservation agriculture so there are so many methods of farming in the country and uh, depending upon climatic conditions soil conditions and farmers condition um, different methods are chosen by people every one method cannot be applicable to all areas so therefore for different regions different places different soils we have different options one option cannot be applicable everywhere so conservation agriculture is also there which can be applied to some selected pockets or to certain areas crops or soils or regions of the country so it looks to be a good option that is conservation agriculture now resource conserving technologies lead to conservation agriculture if we start doing Uh, conser resource conserving uh, or adopting resource conserving technologies then automatically we have conserved our resources so what is a resource let us see any physical or virtual entity of limited availability or anything used to help one or a living so resource this is very broad meaning of resource however in economics factors of production are the resources a concentration of naturally surrounding a uh, naturally occurring solid liquid or gaseous material on the earth's surface crust in such form and amount that economic extraction of a commodity from the concentration is currently or potentially feasible so even our mines in different places are also natural resource in crop production you have natural resources like soil water air forest crop plants that is biodiversity of plants animals and microorganism so they are gifted by nature to human beings therefore they are natural resources and some external resources or artificial resources or you can say off farm resources you need to bring these resources from outside the farm therefore they are called as external resources like fertilizers manures residues labors machines or tillage chemicals pesticides seeds variety hybrid of course out of this manure etc can be produced on the farm but it cannot be considered as very natural resource so rational management of external resources helps in improving the efficiency of natural resources because on our natural resources we are having influence or effect of external resources 
so we need to make the judicious combination of natural and external resources so that the natural resources are not over exploited they are not disturbed and in the end they are preserved so conservation agriculture is one of the option and also a kind of resource conservation technology and let us see more detail about conservation agriculture so ca practices have been developed to achieve agricultural sustainability by following rcts so most of the techniques or technology in conservation are resource conserving technologies that minimize environmental degradation and conserve resources while maintaining high yielding profitable systems and also improve the biological functions of the agro ecosystem with limited mechanical practices conservation agriculture has been defined by food and agriculture organization i think you understand it is in rome italy fao 2021 a farming system that promotes minimum soil disturbance means no till the tillage is not done maintenance of a permanent soil cover and diversification of plant species so you can see there are three components so it enhances biodiversity and natural biological processes above and below the ground surface uh, which contribute to increase water and nutrient use efficiency and to improve and sustain uh, crop production so all all along, all along there are advantages there are no any disadvantage of conservation agriculture at least from definition it looks so in therefore you can see you can divide it into three part conservation agriculture practices only refer to the rcts with the following characteristics so mainly three rcts are used number 1 soil cover particularly through the retention of crop residues on the soil surface that is 30% soil cover should be there so you have seen the case of punjab where residues are burned so this could be a viable options those uh, crop residues of rice instead of burning there they can be used as a soil cover material and sensible profitable crop rotations you need to change your crop regularly the mono monoculture practices of growing just one kind of crop should be avoided or should be changed and third uh, third principle is minimum level of soil movement means you need to adopt zero tillage or no tillage or practically there should not be any disturbance of the soil so rct refers for those practices that that actually enhance resource or input use efficiency it is very very necessary to improve the use efficiency of uh, external inputs without compromising with the reduction in the natural resources quality so resource or input use efficiency like new varieties that use nitrogen more efficiently may be considered under uh, as your rcts or zero or reduced tillage practices that save fuel and improve plot level water productivity may also be considered rcts as may land leveling practices that help so number of practices can be included in rcts if they are improving the efficiency of resources positive effect of conservation agriculture number of uh, uh, positive effects are there build up of organic carbon and rs decline factor productivity many scientific report prove this point and there is build up of organic carbon so carbon sequestration is there therefore people call it climate resilient agriculture or climate smart agriculture partly it can be saving top fertilized soil layer from erosion you are using soil cover there so this soil cover or mulch uh, reduces your soil erosion and further you are not doing tillage system tillage operations are minimum or zero tillage so soil is not exposed for erosion so therefore your soil is conserved enhance nutrient use efficiency by creating favorable environment for microflora and fauna uh, reduce water requirement of crops by uh, cutting evaporation this soil cover also reduces evaporation because it moderates the temperature if you have too high temperature that can be brought down so therefore evaporation evaporation losses can be reduced further there is improvement in the organic matter content of the soil this also reduces water requirement and increases water use efficiency help in the sequestration of greenhouse gas emission in the soil and improve biological activity and diversity good number of research suggests that 
biological diversity in soil increases or improves due to conservation agriculture. Reduce soil compaction due to lesser trafficability. This is really true. If you uh, do plowing job by animals, farm animals or by tractor, so lot of traffic is there which makes your soil compact. But here there is very little use of machinery, so therefore the soil will not get compacted. Ensure timeliness in planting because in tillage uh, you need lot of time. In olden days people used to prepare wheat field for one, one month. It used to take about one month time to plow the land to do the sowing of the wheat. But in this case you can do sowing in one day. There is no waiting period for tillage. Reduce soil erosion, reduce fuel cost because you are not doing tillage. So fuel cost is reduced, Redu reduce wear and tear on the machinery, less load on the machinery. So overall you can see that conservation agriculture results in reduced cost, efficient input use, stable yields and better conservation of natural resources or improvement in the quality of the natural resources. See some differences in conservation agriculture and conventional agriculture. In first column you have conventional agriculture and second column you have conservation agriculture. So cultivating land using science and technology to dominate nature in conventional. In conservation least interference with natural processes. Excessive mechanical tillage or conservation no tillage. High wind and soil erosion in conventional agriculture. Here low wind erosion and low water erosion. Residue burning is practiced in conventional agriculture and here surface retention of residues is there in the conservation agriculture. So you can reduce the environmental pollution by conservation agriculture. Water infiltration is low in conventional agriculture. If water infiltration is low that means uh, the water runoff will be more. The losses of water by runoff can be, uh, can be more if rainfall is there. But in conservation agriculture, the, it is not like this. Infiltration rate is high. That means the losses by runoff will be reduced and soil moisture will be re retained right in the soil. Use of XC2, FYM or compost in conventional agriculture and here use of in situ organics or compost. Green manuring is incorporated in case of conventional agriculture. In conservation, it can be brown manured. Brown manuring means you can grow your leguminous crop like sesvania in certain crops like in maize or rice you can grow for initial 30-40 days and then you knock, knock it down with the help of certain herbicide, selective herbicide like 2,4-D in cereal crops and that is known as brown manuring. So kills establish beets but also stimulate more weed seeds to germinate in conventional agriculture. In con conservation agriculture weeds are a problem in the early stages of adoption but decrease with time. Free wheeling in farm machinery increase soil compaction but in conservation agriculture it is not like this. There is no soil compaction and in conventional you go mostly go for monoculture. Here emphasis is given on crop rotations and diversification of the system. Heavy reliance on manual labor in con conventional. However, in conservation agriculture you get mechanized operation which ensure timeliness of the operation. Poor adaptation to stresses, yield losses, more under stress condition. Here it is more resilient to stresses. Productivity gain in long run are in declining order. Here the productivity gain in long run are in incremental order. Generally they are increasing. Now see conservation agriculture's status in the world, in Asia as well as in India how many countries are doing it and like this. So latest data is available from Kasam and co-workers in 2019 and this data is also accepted by Food and Agriculture Organization Italy. So you can see uh, the latest one is available for 2015-2016 and CA was practiced globally on about 180 million hectare of cropland corresponding to about 12.5 percent of the total global cropland very significant area at global scale. In 2015-16, conservation agriculture adoption was reported by 78 countries in the world. The largest extent of adoption are in South and North America, followed by Australia and New Zealand, Asia, Russia and Ukraine, Europe and Africa. 
So, you can see this data by Kasam and extent it is in 1000 hectares, 1000 hectares of adoption of conservation agriculture worldwide. So, it is for three different years 2008, 9, 2013, 14 and 2015-16. So, you can see the trend in change in area, but right now at the moment you can see the last column where the latest figure is available in USA, United States of America, it was practiced in 43 million hectares, roughly you can say it is 43 million hectares and in Brazil it is 32 million hectares, in Argentina 31. So, these are actually major country, USA, Brazil and Argentina. Brazil, Argentina, they are in South America and US, Canada in North America. Canada has about 19.9, say 20 million hectare area and other important countries are Paraguay, Kazakhstan, China and Bolivia. So, you can go through the details of this data. Now, see the trend in area, how it increased over years. So, you can see starting from 1974 and 1992, there was very little area under conservation agriculture in the world. But after 1992, you can see it looks to be a linear change or linear increase in the area from 1992 onward and up to 2015, it was data was available and it has reached about 180 million hectare. The units on y axis are in uh, million, uh, million hectare. Now, you see extent of conservation agriculture in 1000 hectares in Asia, 2008, 9, 13, 14 and 15, 16, same year. And in Asia, you see China has highest area which is about 9 million hectare, Kazakhstan 2.5 million hectare, India just 1.5 million hectare and other countries are Kyrgyzstan, Turkey, Syria, Korea, DPR, etc. So, you can see the position of India is still not very good. We have just 1.5 uh, million hectare area which is much less than China, even less than Kazakhstan. So, we need to look into the major constraint why the area is not increasing or adoption of conservation agriculture in the country is slow. So, actually resource poor small size landholders because many times conservation agriculture requires heavy machi machinery or machines which are expensive. So, resource, resource poor small holder farmer cannot bear the expensive machinery. Managing CS system will be highly demanding in terms of knowledge base is required, how to apply fertilizer when your crop residues are there on the surface. So, farmers need, need lot of knowledge. So, that is also a limitation. Whole range of practices including planting, harvesting, water and nutrient management, disease and pest control need to be evolved. Still lot of uh, research work is required to be done because it is definitely a new system and we, we need to come out with the solutions. Some problems may come with the farmers like too many weeds may come, some insect, pest and disease problem may also increase and also many other problems can crop in. So, we need to find answers of those problems by doing more and more research. And many times insect, pest and disease invasion can also be high. However, there are mixed reports in the literature. Some reports say that there is less incidence of insect pests and diseases under conservation system. However, some report also say that there is more incidence of insect pests and diseases. So, also these kind of uh, incidences varies with the kind of soil, kind of management and also kind of crops and kind of climate in which you are adopting the conservation agriculture. So, many factors influence the uh, effect of incidence of insect pest and diseases. However, methods are available to manage insect pest and diseases in the system. Herbicides and or our saf safety, many times weed growth is too high. So, you need to apply uh, sometimes selective herbicide, sometimes non-selective herbicide and, and the doses can be very high. So, it could be uh, a, a thing of consideration. Now, we come to after conservation agriculture and its RCT, we see certain more resource conserving technologies. So, the basic purpose of all the resource conserving technologies is to conserve the resources like soil, water, nutrients and energy, ensure optimum utilization of resources 
means we need to increase the efficiency of resources uh, that is enhance resource or input use efficiency. So now uh, we can define RCT is resource conserving technology. Resource conservation techniques are the practices when followed results in saving of energy cost and also reduce the environmental pollution over the conventional practices. So here I would like to say that conservation agriculture is one of the RCT and there are more, many more RCTs in addition to conservation agriculture. Of course, some are followed in conservation agriculture, but they can be extended to conventional agriculture also, some of the resource conserving technologies. So that is the difference in conservation agriculture and RCTs. So what are the benefits of uh, RCTs or resource conservation technologies? Increased soil organic carbon, saving in irrigation water, numerous approaches are available to save the water. We will discuss some of them here. Increase in energy efficiency, promotes timely sowing of input, particularly some machines are available for zero tillage, we will see them now. And then saving of resources, yield advantage is there. Some reports say that conservation agriculture and other practices, RCT, result in saving of resources and increase in yield. Lower production cost, improved soil health and increase in profitability because uh, cost of production can be minimized as there is less expense expenses on tillage operation, on fuel cost, etc. Now there are many RCTs which can be employed uh, in agriculture depending upon the soil climate and crop conditions. So there may be some new varieties or hybrids. Every year some new varieties and hybrids are coming up. With the same level of input, with the same, same level of cost, hybrids can give you more yield compared to the traditional varieties or low yielding varieties. So better to choose the variety which give you more response to the input. So this is very simple change. So this kind of RCT can be very useful. Then zero or reduced or minimum tillage, we have seen the example of zero tillage in conservation agriculture. Third is rotary tillage, we will discuss subsequently the benefits of rotary tillage. Bed planting is another method which is also called as FURB, uh, furrow irrigated raised bed system, FIRB. Surface seeding is age old practice uh, in India. Laser land leveling, it is uh, spreading like anything. We will discuss this laser land leveling, chlorophyll meter, spread meter, option to increase nitrogen use efficiency. With less nitrogen, you can get more yields. It can also save some nitrogen. Aerobic and direct seeded rice is another option. System of rice intensification, system of wheat intensification, cotton intensification, even sugar cane intensification. In many crops, new kind of system of in intensification are coming are being tested in research and in some of the research results they have been found good. Only thing is that we need to take them to the farmer's field and see their performance. If satisfactory, they should be, should be spread. Uh, brown manuring we discussed in conservation agriculture and drip irrigation and fertigation system is also important to save the water, to increase the water use efficiency irrespective of the kind of your production system. This drip system can be applicable to organic farming, to conventional farming, to conservation agriculture, to any form of farming you can use this drip system which save lot of water. And then residue recycling is good option. They can be recycled directly into the soil by incorporation or they can be re recycled by making compost. Compost can be prepared and then it can be used for crop production. Modified fertilizer materials like now we are happy in India that our uh, urea has been made compulsorily as, as uh, neem coated urea. Now you see some benefits of RCTs uh, like uh, zero tillage results in carbon sequestration, reduce fuel consumption and reduce GHG em emission. GHG means greenhouse gases emission. Timely sowing, laser leveling results in reduced water use and fuel consumption. Uh, DSR is direct seeded rice, less requirement of water, time saving, better soil condition and deeper root system of DSR. And now there are some varieties in India 
that can be uh, that can be used under direct seeding of rice diversification efficient use of water increase income increase nutritional security conserve soil fertility and reduce risk so number of benefits are there for diversification of the crops raised bed planting uh, less water use improved drainage better residue so these kind of techniques are possible by using machine for raised bed planting you, you need machines leaf color chart is very cheapest uh, input it is costing just rupees 50 or 60 but it can save your nitrogen particularly in cereal crops like rice wheat and maize now we see the zero till we we can see the do the analysis of zero till so for zero tillage purpose gb pant nagar university was the first to develop the tillage machine zero till machine so it was developed by gb pant university first and subsequently it was developed by directorate of wheat research karnal now it is known as indian institute of wheat and barley research karnal so here you do not need any plowing operation or tillage operations and sowing is directly done without field preparation so it has got knife type tines which are used for cutting the soil as narrow slit to place seed and fertilizer at appropriate depth so it does not open very deep uh, furrow it it just make a small slit or a small structure and then put the seed directly into the soil at very right moisture so benefits are saving in fuel energy fuel energy time less inf infestation of failless miner advances sowing time and less water for first irrigation no need for leveling after sowing and produces almost similar yield as conventional tillage so zero tillage is really advantageous but it is not taking place in many crops only under few crops it has been adopted in the country particularly in rice wheat system under wheat condition this kind of tillage zero tillage has been ab adopted up to some extent some farmers have adopted it in the maize crop also so it can can sow about 1.5 acre in one hour this this zero till machine and it can save field preparation cost to the extent of 2000 to 2500 rupees per hectare it is recommended to use the machine at little higher soil moisture as compared to conventional tillage because if your soil is dry then draft power will be required will be more so little uh, wet soil not wet moist soil can be best for this it can be used for crops like wheat rice soybean green gram under tilled as well as under non tilled conditions cost may be 20000 to 25000 or 30000 this is the picture of the zero till drill machine you can see on the back side of the machine you have some tines are visible and you have some pipes so through these pipes seed will fall and also there is arrangement for fertilizer so fertilizer and seed both can be applied by this machine and also this dwr directed of wheat research also developed two or three different kind of uh, zero till machine so three models were developed you can see overall width of model 60 75 and 90 so you can see the width and working width and then row number is 9 11 and 13 and row spacing is 7.5 inch in all but the seed capacity is high as you go advance the version or model seed capacity is 65 kg 95 kg 120 kg in one time and fertilizer capacity is also more in the last model and but the main thing is that the, the lower model dmw 60 it needs a small tractor means the common tractor can work which has 35 horsepower and for dmw 75 you need tractor of 40 to 45 horsepower and dmw 90 need very heavy tractor 50 horsepower tractor this is how sowing of wheat with zero till drill after rice harvest has been done you can see this picture and see the wheat sown with zero till seed drill in anchored rice residues this is the growth of the crop in the anchored rice residues here the residues are anchored because uh, the harvesting of uh, wheat and rice is primarily done by combine in punjab and in some parts of 
Haryana in parts of Tarai, Tarai regions of Uttarakhand and western UP. So these are the area where combined machine is used for harvesting of uh, crops of rice and wheat. So wheat residues are very valuable and farmers do not burn them and they are used to feed the cattle or other animals uh, or other livestock. But rice residues are not having that much of use for cattle and other purposes and they are burnt. So therefore, a part of these residues can be retained in the, in the field as anchored residue. They are anchored, they are standing, they are uh, uh, on the soil. Their roots are not disturbed and they are very, very helpful and under these conditions, zero till drill can work, this machine can work effectively. But there may be situations where uh, residues are not removed from the field. Like in case of Punjab, farmers do not like to remove the residues from the field and they burn it and then they go for the sowing of the wheat crop by simple by uh, field preparation, plowing it and then doing the sowing. But uh, that is causing several problems, environmental pollution, loss of organic matter and there are many issues of human health. So therefore, under these conditions, the Punjab Agriculture University and certain other institute they have developed many machines uh, and one of them is happy seeder. So what happy seeder does, if there are large load of uh, crop residues in the field, so in one uh, operation, it can cut the residues, it can do the sowing, it can spread the res residues, it is doing so many functions at a time. In one time, it is doing so many functions and it can do sowing of wheat or rice in the residues. So you can see in picture, this is the happy cedar, sometimes it is called as turbo cedar also and in Punjab farmers are using it and it is good news that area under this kind of system is increasing in Punjab. However, this uh, machine is very expensive and also you, you, need, you know that tractor is also expensive and you also know that fuel is also expensive. So it is not easy for a small farmer or farmers who are not, has, or who are not well off or who do not get credit from the government or banks, etc. Et so it is uh, better to go for some other system like hiring system, certain uh, people can purchase these machines and, and, and distribute them for uh, hiring basis so that even a small or uh, farmers who are not well off, they can also take advantage of this technology. So you can see that this machine is working in residues, crop residues, very large quantity of residues left after harvesting by combined machine. So, but this machine can very well do the sowing. I have seen it, uh, use, uh, its use. And you can see uh, the, the field surface mulching, it acts as a mulch. The residues are cut into pieces, small pieces and mulching and they are left and wheat crops sown in the residue using happy cedar here. And you, on the right side, you can see the picture where wheat crop is, is doing well and your soil is also covered. So evaporation losses of water will be reduced and there will not be weed infestation under these conditions. You will not require herbicide, etc. There will be definitely costs, cost saving in case of weed. You can see this is, uh, this is uh, the view, the final view you can see after the sowing of the crop where the residues are in, in a very thin layer, they have been cut into pieces. And you can see very nice crop of wheat growing in this picture was taken from uh, Borlog in Institute of Sustainable Agriculture, which is located in Ludhiana. So one institute is dedicated for this kind of work. And you can see close picture of this and here wheat growth is very well. Trilling is high and there is no issue with the crop. And then cowpea is, is also very important crop as diversification is also kind of resource conservation technology. We need to change our rotations. We need to follow uh, your intercropping system or you can see mixed kind, mixed cropping system where we can conserve the soil. So in this case, this cowpea is really very good, a smoother crop which, which can cover the ground surface very well and it can reduce the weeds and it can conserve the soil. So this crop can be in, uh, integrated as an intercrop or this can be taken as in the cropping system also and it can be it can have multiple uses it can be used as a green manure crop 
or as a erosion resisting crop. Sometimes farmers go for a strip cropping system, maybe in hilly areas, maybe in areas where you get soil erosion problem. So in that case, uh, it can act as a erosion resisting crops because it will reduce the effect of the wind, it covers the soil, reduce the water losses and so on. So this is really a very beneficial crop and some other legume crop can also substitute or replace this cow pea crop. Direct seeded rice is yet another promising resource conserving technologies. So you can see on the uh, one side, uh, left side of this uh, slide, you can see puddle transplanted continuously submerged. So this is one situation of rice cultivation where more water is required, more labor and more meth methane emission in puddle transplanted rice. But there are options to grow rice without puddling and without transplanting that is your direct seeded rice. So direct seeded rice can save your resources, particularly water resource. And also the methane emissions will be less from aerobic rice. And the area under aerobic rice or direct seeded rice is slowly increasing in the country, which is a matter of uh, great satisfaction. Now see, nitrogen use efficiency can be improved and that is also a resource conserving uh, technology because you are saving the nitrogen. So there could be different means to save the nitrogen, like synchronizing nitrogen management with plant demand and soil supply. Apply nitrogen in at right time, by right dose, by right source, by right method. So these are very simple techniques by which we can save nitrogen. And others are like using leaf color chart. You are seeing on the right side the leaf color chart. Many farmers, particularly rice growing farmers, are aware of this leaf color chart, how to use it. And also nitrification inhibitors are available in the market. And the neem coated urea is not the end. Now people or researchers are having, uh, are doing research on some new dimensions, double coating of inhibitors. And then urea super granule, there is renewed interest in urea super granule particularly among the researchers. Now let us have some uh, dissection of zero tillage or evaluation of zero tillage. So tillage normally breaks the soil aggregates. If you do tillage two times, three times in the soil, it breaks down the aggregate which is not good for retention of water, microbes and so on. And exposes organic carbon to microbial attack and weathering. So this tillage leads to reduction of organic matter in the soil and more CO2 emission due, due to decomposition or faster decomposition of organic matter. But zero tillage, it promotes aggregation, less CO2 emission, helps early sowing, improves soil carbon, saves water, labor and fuel and reduce soil erosion. You have already seen most of these things, most, most of these benefits of the uh, zero tillage. See some more data. So zero tillage saves about 25% water and sowing can be advanced by 7 to 10 days. Rodent damage is more in uh, zero tillage compared with conventional tillage. This is a negative point of uh, zero tillage because you are using uh, residues, crop residues and many times this makes a heaven for rats. So rats may be there in the soil, it has been observed. It is a negative point of conservation agriculture. Reports indicate that insect like rice stem borer, like pink borer particularly, there are many kind of stem borer in rice. One is pink borer and it can also damage the wheat seedling. And it is happening in Pakistani Punjab, Indian Punjab and in Himachal Pradesh. Now some incidences of pink borer are being observed that it has become a pest of wheat crop. Fellless infestation is lower but after three to four years of continuous uh, zero tillage incidence of certain weeds may be more. Retention of crop residues on soil surface can help in controlling soil erosion, moisture conservation and build up of earthworm populations. All wheat varieties may not be suitable for zero tillage. Those with longer coleoptile length are better suited. Zero tillage can be adopted on other systems like maize wheat system, cotton wheat system, bajra wheat system, or soybean wheat or pigeon pea wheat system. But you can see this wheat is there because over years we have seen that normally kharif crops are not responsive to zero tillage or these kind of system. 
but zero tillage has been more successful in rabi crops. Long term effect of zero tillage on physical, chemical and biological conditions of soil as well as on pest dynamics need to be studied. And then there are of course certain limitations of zero tillage. Uh, pest dynamics, uh, weeds including perennial weeds, rodent damage as I just told you, insect damage and bird damage can also happen. Poor root growth may be there sometimes. Loose residues, stubbles and weeds, they may interfere in sowing because every farmer will not get the, the turbo seeder or happy seeder. Precise or ideal conditions, proper leveling, optimum soil moisture, weed free conditions, light texture soil, careful handling of machine, etc. Now see another technology, bed planting can be followed in conservation agriculture or in conventional agriculture or any kind of agriculture. FURB is known as furrow irrigated raised bed system, means here you have ridges or beds and you also have furrows. So crops grown on raised bed and irrigation in furrows. So we have in alternate fashion, you can have beds or ridges and then furrow. So beds are prepared in a fine tilled soil. Uh, DWR uh, planter makes two beds at a time at 65 to 70 centimeter spacing. Crops are sown on 40 centimeter wide raised beds and providing irrigation in 30 centimeter wide furrows. So number of rows vary with different crops, three rows of wheat, two rows of peas, green gum, soybean. So depending upon nature of crop, you can adjust the number of the rows. Narrow row means you can adjust more rows, wider rows you can adjust uh, less rows. Wheat after pigeon pea, maize, soybean and peas and green gum after mustard and wheat can be sown just by reshaping the beds. You need not to disturb these beds every time. Benefits are interculturing, roguing saves nitrogen, water and seeds, less germination of weeds on top of beds and less dependency on herbicide, reduces lodging, etc. Cost may be 18,000 to 20,000 now. See this is bed planter used for planting of bed and it is attached to the tractor. And this is how it makes the bed. You can see the bed is made and in one operation, one time, it can do the sowing also and it can put the fertilizer also. And then you can see after sowing, it is leveling also, leveling the bed. So these are the beds, you, you are seeing two beds here. So left side and right side. So these are also called as ridges. And between two beds, you can see the furrows also. So there can be some adjustment, uh, some uh, different land configuration. Uh, you can have conventional flat planting where maize here just is, it is an example. Spacing is 65. Again, spacing is 65, but it is narrow, narrow bed. And then you can also have broad bed, but spacing is also same. So these are land configuration. Depending upon the kind of bed planter, you can adjust this. And see the green gram and pigeon pea raised on bed planting system. You can see the crops are growing well, performance is good. And you can see mustard on beds. On left side, you can see it is on the narrow bed and there are about two rows of mustard. And in between them, there is a furrow, which may be 25 to 30 centimeter depth. On the right side, you can see it is broad bed. So here you can see four rows of mustard are adjusted. And again, you have one furrow. So these are different systems, broad bed, narrow bed, and getting evaluated. But these systems have been found better than the flat sowing in many, many crops. And I have seen and in China, they, they do this kind of job for most of the crops, bearing rice and some other crops. So this bed, the bed system is good than flat system. And you can see wheat sown on beds. You see performance of green gum on raised beds. See plastic mulching on raised beds. And this is, uh, of course, there are some constraints also, some problems also like perfect conditions at sowing, deep well pulverized soil, proper leveling, optimum moisture, early first irrigation or more frequent irrigation may be required, clean cultivation, uh, not compatible with undecomposed residues, requires a relatively heavy tractor, more than 35 horsepower, and pest dynamics, low yields and less poor. So of course, everything, almost every practice have some limitations, some constraint, but we should know all those constraints also. 
like rotary till drill. It is another machine, combination of rotavator, seed cum fertilizer drill, and light planker cum driving wheel at the uh, at the back. Nine row seed cum fertilizer drill tilts and pulverizes the top soil before placing seed and fertilizer. So you can see the this is rotary uh, till drill. Here the rotavator is also fixed, and you can add have some attachment of sewing and bed making also. So you can see another uh, DWR rotary till drill machine and this is how it works. You can, you can check it and it is leveling also, it is doing sewing also and rotavator also. So you can see this is picture is from Punjab sewing of wheat uh, with a rotary drill in a single operation after rice harvest. Fantastic, some farmers uh, are using it. See if you want to mix green manure, this can be used rotary till drill being used for incorporating green manure. So, a lot of machines are coming into picture, but thing is that it is they are being adopted by few state and few farmers. Not many farmers are coming forward to adopt these machines. And see if this is the wheat or uh, rice after rotary till drill, you can see good crop of wheat. Then next is your uh, laser guided land leveling. This is required to make your fields level so that you can save the water and this practice has been very very widely adopted by farmers in Uttar Pradesh, Punjab, Haryana, Maharashtra, Ma Madhya Pradesh, almost every state has adopted and every three to four years farmers are getting their land leveled by this laser guided land leveling. So objectives are to make the, the more level and smooth soil surface, so overall the purpose is to make your land level and and that will result in the saving of the seed and certain benefits are there like water saving can happen by laser leveling because your fields are at zero grade. There is no slope, increase in yield has been reported and energy saving is also there. So overall it is giving benefits and farmers are adopting it. So today, today's last uh, thing is surface seeding. It is uh, old practice and which is also a resource conserving technology. It is natural kind of sowing where tillage is not required. So most simplest of zero tillage system being promoted in eastern India, Nepal and Bangladesh. Sowings are delayed after harvest of rice in lowland areas due to excess soil moisture. So many times uh, uh, like crops like rice which is grown in low lying area. Under those conditions sowing of the next crop is not possible because tillage is not possible. So what farmer used to do? They will broadcast the seed of the lentil or seed of uh, lentil or barsim or some other crops uh, before the harvest of rice, which is also known as uh, overlapping cropping or surface seeding. You are putting the seed directly on the surface by broadcast. So sowings are delayed after harvest of rice in lowland areas due to excess soil moisture. So seed of crop like wheat and legumes are broadcast on wet soil in standing rice crops about a week before harvesting or on wet muddy soil. So it saves you a lot of time. Then there are certain benefits of uh, surface seeding like no equipment is needed. You just need to broadcast the seed. Heavy texture soils are more suitable for it and suitable for areas where land preparation is very difficult and costly. There must be certain precautions like key to success is correct soil moisture at sowing. There should not be too high moisture, your, otherwise your seed will not germinate. Less moisture reduces germination and higher moisture may cause rotting of the seed. Rice straw mulch after seeding ensures better germination. So dear student, hope you could follow many things, particularly all the resource conservation technologies including your conservation agriculture, zero tillage, etc. Thank you very much.